Mm. Quarter nine and we're at dusk at the brew shed. Nights are starting to pull in. Not good. Ah, we're on. I don't know what the light exposure is like. Bloody awful. Fluorescent lighting. Hate it. Well, good evening and welcome to another Humbrew Wednesday of such sorts. Um, this is going to be a really early one or a really late one or both. Last week I was on holiday because I'm shooting this over. Excuse the percussion drums. Can't do nothing with it. Oh yeah, a bit naughty this week. Had a little holiday treat. It's just holiday treat, honest. Um, yeah, we've uh, sort of compiled a few bits and pieces together to make a homebrew Wednesday of such. Um, so that's what we'll be following on from this. Just a quick note to say, obviously a fellow, if you've probably heard, a fellow home brewer has had a bit of an unfortunate event at home. Steve Ogden, Heathen Brewer. Um, I know a number of the guys uh, will probably put other videos up, but I'm just tagging it on as well in case you don't subscribe to them. But Heathen Brewer, unfortunately, he's had a house fire. His youngster, his little lad's been injured. Matt Callaby has set up a GoFundMe page to help them out. Um, I'll put a link down below. There's no pressure for anyone to do anything, but obviously anything that anyone can do will be a great help to them, I'm sure. Uh, looking at the pictures on Facebook, uh, the house is sort of uh, fairly well damaged, um, and the rooms are shown. Won't go into it because uh, he's got enough to deal with anyway. But if you can help out, I'll put a link down in the comment section. Um, anything will help the guy, I'm sure, once he gets sorted out. Obviously, his priorities are elsewhere at the minute <clears throat> with his young lad being in hospital. So, uh, please enjoy the rest of the video, and I'll catch you on the end of it. Recording the recorder. Double cam action. Hmm. I'm going to frig about with this on the old. Uh, software and see what happens. Now that we've got two cameras we can talk to one camera or talk to the HLT cam. Hello HLT. You look a bit rough. In fact you look as rough as I feel. Anyway. Goodbye. That one's off and you're off too. And back in the old brew shed we're almost um, square. We've got the two fridges stacked here, so uh, we've got a fermentation fridge and just overflow beer in that one, but that is we're gonna have to make another controller. There's the old junk shelf with some bits and pieces. Managed to get this back in, a few bits to get rid of, and the old uh, mash tun boil kettle. Looks like we've got a can't see it. A little invader after all my clearing, the little bastards have still got back in. Yes, we have a few spitters in here, but I've uh, got me rid of most of them. Got another uh, Burko set up and ready to go. Just got to give her a bit of a clean with some citric acid. And that one's uh, a little job at work. That's my usual one. So we're nearly. Uh, up and straight, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Before I lose the light, I ended up with these old style carboys for nothing. The guy wanted the place cleared out. There's a few bits that some people had put the names on. Unfortunately, the nice stuff had already gone. But the reason I ended up there was because of this bad boy took the cover off there. This is a fruit pulper. Don't know where, what make it is. It's an Italian I think. But, uh, it's an Italian mocha. And an Italian plug. Free pin job I haven't uh, wanted to see so I've just done a quick electrical bodge with some chalk blocks. And uh, she works. As you said on Facebook, if you've seen the vid, 
the motor cowling had been smacked in storage. Um, I've got to try and heat that up with a hot air gun. Reshape that. But uh, it doesn't look like it's ever been used. Apparently it was an Italian family that had a restaurant and also made cider in a little lockup. It was a massive great uh, oak fruit press but unfortunately I missed that along with two 200 litre stainless steel fermenters. But I managed to pick this up and uh, it was a bit of an unknown. You can see there's a pulley there, drives the bottom, then off a cog wheel. Similar sort of thing to the old style ones. It's got a paddle there for breaking up the apples and they go down the rollers and work the way along here and fall through the bottom so it's a bit of an upscaled version of the hand crank one I had from a few years ago bit dry as well but uh, yeah stainless steel hopper can't complain for 25 quid, can you? Well, down here you'll see hops. Well, they don't look like it because there's no cones at all. On these, you can see the leaves have never developed. This is because they're pot bound. So I've never had anywhere to put them. They've managed, I've actually thought they died this year, or this last season. Got in the pot and started the rot away, but they've managed to pull through. They've been totally neglected, not looked after, just left there, you know, survival of the fittest. So that's what happens to your potted hops. If you haven't got any uh, enough room for them, they will not flourish, obviously. Self-preservation. And uh, suffering uh, this year's dry weather as well, although they have been watered. But I'll show you now what happens if you just plant them in the ground and let them do their own thing. If you let them do their own thing, they swallow up your old van. Completely. And the hedge and the fence. In fact, if you saw my little snippet on Facebook, all of this is the same rhizomes as the other ones retrieved at the same time these ones just got planted in the ground there is the cascade i've harvested about half of it because it was over the door and down the barrier but there's still i've had a kilo there's a good bit more where the dishes was is where my styrian was which is already dehydrated and packed about 326 grams dried now in the freezer then finally Brings me into here, so we've got the cascade on the on the heater, on the dehydrator. This was uh, an Andrew James, as it says there. Last year they had um, extra trays available, which were out of stock come hop season, but they came in, I think it was November, I pre-ordered them and got them. So uh, we've got the, well there's one one left over for this batch, it was just a, just a tad over a kilo of picked cascade. But it uh, does smell really fragrant this year. However, the extra sun's done it um, some good. But we weighed her out. Got her on 40C for, I think it's seven hours at the minute. And what I do is rotate the trays because obviously these are going to get the most heat. So I put them and these are going to get the least. So I basically swap them all around, rotate them, see how much they need and sort of guesstimate. Usually about another four or five hours. Then weigh them out again and see how much moisture we've lost and work it out from there. Then vacuum pack. Oh, it's me again, I'm back. Just seems like a few seconds, well actually, yeah it has been because I'm still smoking that same old stick. Let the window, leave the door open, let the smoke out. <clears throat> How'd you be getting complaints from air indoors? Anyway. The brew shed. Um, despite my best efforts, the little eight-legged fiends have returned. Um, <clears throat> but we've got to sort out the brew shed because some of you may know Dudes Brews, Mr. Richard, um, drew me on the thousand subs. 
subscriber draw. So uh, I hit the jackpot. Well, one of them anyway. Euro lottery would be nice too, but um, we'll, we'll take the, uh, the winning, which was a uh, ingredients to make a kit or a beer kit. So I um, had a look online, a few UK sites that do all grain kits, everything ready, just, you know, get on with it and do it sort of thing. So I've chose a Malt Miller New England IPA. It was a toss up really between that, Sierra Nevada Cologne, and what looked quite an interesting beer was a Chipotle smoked porter from Brew UK. So I might end up getting that one myself later on, but um, means I've got a sort of mash turn out. I don't know how, I think it's a 22 litre kit, I can't remember now off the top of my head, which is probably going to be lost in my mash turn, so I might have to, um, I think that was one of my problems I had with my mash. I did used to lose some temperature, not a huge amount, but more than you'd like to. I think mainly because obviously it's a big old US style Coleman uh, mash tun and a regular sort of five gallon batch when it would probably accommodate a 10 gallon batch mash wise. Um, so there's a lot of dead space in there where the heat is just obviously going out straight through the lid. So I might have to devise a little um, foil covered uh, food grade friendly insulation blanket to sit on top of the mash this time which was something I was intending on trying um, with my old setup because obviously the new <laughs> the new setup is still a well I wouldn't say ongoing but um, it's still there in in on the shelf <coughs> along with the many other hundreds of jobs I have to do so um, it has sort of pushed things forward um, because it's a pre-crushed kit. He did ask me if I wanted uh, uncrushed or crushed. So I went uh, for the uncrushed. Because um, I haven't set the mill up. I've assembled it. But I, well, I'll be honest. I'm not really sure where it is yet. I think it's in the back bedroom. <coughs> or the overflow brew room. Um, so yes. I will have to make time to do a brew. Other than a uh, quick and easy kit. Um, don't quite know, obviously it will be sooner rather than later because obviously I want to do it fresh. Don't want to end up leaving it uh, in the box of oddities along with the other ones. So uh, make a uh, special effort to try <laughs> get this bloody one under my belt and done and get some of it bottled. And um, see if we can send an odd one out, maybe... Uh, Seems we're lacking in the Humbrew department. We'll do a bear mail for one or two people maybe and um, see what bargains I can scavenge from work um, and make a little a gifty pack us up for uh, a couple of my fellow tubers out there, whoever you may be as yet to be decided. Um, and obviously I'll send one over to Mr. Dude's Brews as well so that he can evaluate it. So hopefully it won't um, go pear shaped. Anyway, I won't let the video drag out any longer than I normally do. We don't want um, to bore you to death completely if you haven't already started slicing your wrists. And... There's better to be drunk anyway, so uh, we'll catch you on the next one before my battery terminates. Anyway, cheers and beers, catch you on the next one.